for the Pledge of Allegiance.
keep these trees from the deer eating them. And with, when you do something like this with the forest preserve, I would really personally say watch it. I've seen them cut down the forest preserve on 167th Street, and then they said that all of a sudden there's too many deer in the area, and with that they started culling and shooting the deer. Now, to me, if you take 10, 20 acres, destroy it, cut the trees down, level it, they didn't even put a baseball field out there. They didn't do anything. They didn't put a walking path that I know of. They just take our money and spend it on stuff that makes no sense. This, when we put in that bike trail, hopefully we might get a couple things that is beneficial to everyone here and the kids. We put in a bike path that stops at Culver Park, and it starts at 137th and Wilcote Road. It stops at Culver Park, it was supposed to continue west, and eventually tie into this trail that now we're gonna build. I don't understand why we can't finish what we're supposed to finish. <coughs> 143rd Street, me and my wife went out this afternoon, we saw two people and both of them were probably in their 80s, but when we went out, one was walking down 143rd Street when we were coming back home. The other side of the street, there was a lady walking to the old people's home over there. And it's like, why can't we get that sidewalk put in when I thought the money was appropriated for it? But the sidewalk still isn't in since the street's been put in. Uh, other than that, it's only a couple of things, but anyway, that's with the stuff we're talking about now with the Forest Preserve. I just not a happy camper with the Forest Preserves and how they, they think and then how they take advantage of villages. Uh, another thing, when I went to Home Depot, we had a group of people or a lady come up here and she's getting a group together and they were gonna start cleaning up the north side of Home Depot and the area there. It looks real good now. You don't see too, you still see debris. But today, yesterday, my mistake, we had to go up to the car uh, tire shop. The whole north side from Home Depot North is just bags and bags and you know, all over the place. I mean, th this community it isn't meant to look like a, you know, a junk shop. Somebody's got to be responsible for it, whether it be Home Depot or whoever owns that vacant property. And like I say, it's getting seems to be getting worse instead of better. So hopefully we can start finishing stuff we started and take care of the stuff that's there now. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks, John. Okay. Yeah. Hi, I'm Kathy Myers Boo. I have the property that's on 159th and Gallagher. I'd like to address the sewer route and that um, the Finnebit Creek sewer route that this gentleman was talking about. Um, the route that the Forest Preserve agreed upon was done at least in 2006, 2007 is when the route, route was agreed upon. I was involved in reading the documents, walking through the woods because I had property beside it to make sure that where this route went, it did not disturb or destroy old growth. Where the route is going through, where they're boring under the creek, there are no old growth trees. Um, this is something that is needed to put your 159th Street corridor, which is being, 130 million is being spent on it right now to get completed. This is something to be used to bring development to the 159th Street from 355 all the way up. Um, seeing as my family owns the corner at 159th and Gallagher, 
we need this to bring in development. We need it to bring in commercial development to bring money into the economy for Homer Glen. Um, I am completely positive that when this gets through with the forest preserve seeing as we still live there on this property, um, I will be very involved in it because I'm there, I will see what's going on. If something is being done incorrectly or in a wrong place, I will be eyes on the ground. So I just want to tell you, as I have dealt with most of you already over the years, this is my fourth administration, am I correct? Third, fourth group of people that I have dealt with with this. And you are my third mayor that I've dealt with. So I am excited that this is finally becoming a reality. And hopefully this will help you entice more businesses into the community along 159th Street. Thank you. Is there any other comments? Okay, is there a motion to close the public hearing? I nice salute. Gabriel. I'll second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? <coughs> Motion carries and the public hearing is adjourned. The meeting will be called back into order. Uh, next one is for Bob Schmidt. <laughs> Bob Schmidt and his wife Connie moved to Homer Township over 40 years ago and opened up the Hilgo <coughs> Camping Business on March 17, 1978. Bob and Connie have found Homer to be a great place to live, to work, raise a family of five, and eventually retire. They have witnessed many changes over the years and still enjoy the community they call home. Through the years, Bob has been a dedicated member of the community, not only as a successful business owner, but also as a founding father of the Homer Chamber of Commerce. Bob was instrumental in building strong business connections through the community and served as a government liaison for seven years. Along with his service of the Chamber of Commerce, Bob has been a vital member of several of the village's committees, including the Public Services and Safety Committee from 2003 to 2015, and two years of service on both the village's side committee and the community and economic, economic development committee. Bob also served as a member of the village's police task force. We salute Bob for his many years of dedication, his outstanding service, and a commitment to the entire home run community, and want to extend a big thank you for truly making a difference. Outstanding service and commitment. Thank you for everything you have done. You truly make a difference. Volunteer service from 2003 to 2017, Village of Homer Glen. You've also been a very good friend of mine for all these years, and I love you very much.
Good man. Good man. Good man. Congratulations to Homer 33C girls bowling team on winning the Illinois Elementary School Association's Girls State Bowling Tournament on April 13th and 14th in Joliet. This is the first year a Homer 33C team bowling team has won a state championship. 24 boys and girls teams participated in the state event. After bowling four games the first day, one of the top 10 teams advanced to the second day matchup where they bowled six more games. The girls' team comprised of eighth graders Emma Punter, Debbie Countess, seventh grader Cassie Contos, oh, I got that right, Cassie. Sixth grader Paige Chasek, bowled an incredible 735 the first game of the tournament, led by Paige Chasek's 220 game. The team's four-person scored was the highest game shot by any girls' type team the entire weekend. When all 10 games were added up in the home of 33C, girls team won by 149 pins. The Girls State Championship Trophy is the first for home bowling program, and I am confident we will see more. I would now like to recognize Haley Middle School teacher and bowling coach Andrew Dole for leading the team through the season and in the state championship event. Coach Dole, if you could please step up. We now recognize the entire team. If we could get the team up here. There we go. Yeah. We told them not to dance on the team. All right. We now recognize the entire team for their outstanding performance. We have a certificate for each team member. After receiving your certificate, please stay up here so we can do a group photo. I ask the audience to hold their chairs and applause until all team members are up here. So this would be Cassie Cantos. Did I get that right? Yep. yep. Okay. Demi Cantos, Paige Matisse, and Emma Punter. Let's give everyone a big round of applause. Thank you. Appreciate it. 
Thank you so much.
work will be substantially completed by October 31st. And that's all I have. Thank you, Trustee Kirk. Trustee Barry. Oh, Board Mayor, just to, just to echo, thank you to Bob, specifically for your service on community and economic development. Um, we're certainly going to miss your speeches, but something tells me we're, we're still going to be entertained by them from time to time. So I don't know uh, I don't know anybody that loves this town more than you, Bob, and you deserve all the accolades. So thank you for all your all your volunteerism. One well, good day. <laughs> Trustee Rogers. Um, I just want to say it. I hope you can continue to be president of my fan club. <laughs> Woo! I'm sure we'll see you, continue to see you at some meetings and look forward to your input. Um, but reporting on Capital Public Safety uh, behind Mike Solomonovich is a sample of the signs that are going up at the parks. I believe there's seven signs, two at Kingston Hills, two at, uh, what was the other one? No, that was all, just two at Kingston Hills, one at the other one in the sign. Um, we'll have a, a little plaque below it that says Playground Ahead. So we're still on schedule to have those installed at the five <coughs> of the park prior to Memorial Day. That's all I have. Thank you, Trustee Rogers. Trustee Sweets. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Bob, for making a difference. Uh, reporting for the Environment Committee, we still have some red oak seedlings available at the Village Hall. Uh, supplies are getting short, but they're still available. Uh, the Homer Glen Environment Committee is looking for the biggest tree in the village. Nominations for each species of a living tree can be submitted and applications are available online. The deadline for submission is May 31st. As a reminder, our next stargazing event will take place on Friday, May 11th, at the Trentina Farm from 9 to 11 p.m. Please check the village website and Facebook page in case of cancellation due to cloudy, cloudiness or rain. I just also wanted to remind everybody, or as you know, ComEd will be installing smart meters in the village starting <coughs> this month through uh, or June. Just wanted to let you know, though, there is a deferral program that is available until mid-2022. It will cost you, though, $21.53 a month. Thought you might want to sign up temporarily to check it out for uh, your house or check out further information before that happens. That concludes my report. Thank you, Trustee Sweet. Trustee Gabriel. Thank you, Mayor. Bob, thanks for everything you've done. I think we met almost eight years ago. You put a hitch on one of my vehicles, yeah. and we've been friends ever since. So I thank you. Thank you for your service. And I kiss my hand every time. <laughs> uh, I'm reporting on behalf of the Homer Community Parade Festival Committee. Uh, festival dates are set Thursday, June 21st through Sunday, June 24th. We have a total of six food vendors already lined up, and uh, that's Ruby Agave, Pelican Harry's, Davidson's, Cool Creations, Smoke and Z's Barbecue, and Pizza Mia. The lineup of bands is all set, ready to go. Thursday night will be the fireworks uh, with a rain date of Friday. Special needs day is Friday from 2.30 to 4.30. The carnival will be free to all Homer residents and their children with special needs. We have many sponsors who have joined on this year. Ruby Agave will be doubling their margarita donation for all who enjoy. Mega passes uh, will be on sale soon, if they're not already. Um, you can reach the Village Hall at 708-301-0632 for more information. And lastly, we are always looking for adult and youth volunteers, so please contact the Homer Township Road District, who was gracious enough to pick up that task for us in our committee. Uh, they, the, the Road District can be reached at 708-301-0246. And lastly, Besides that, you can uh, visit our website at www.homerfest.com for more details on the <laughs> fest. And that will conclude my report. Thank you, Treasurer Gabriel. Uh, is there a treasurer's report? No report, ma'am. Uh, Phyllis Clerk? No report, sir. Village Attorney? No report. Public Safety Officials? Yes, sir. Good evening, Lieutenant. Good evening, Mayor. Thanks for having me up here. Anytime. It's a little bit long, but I'll read fast. Um, just want to let everybody know, early this morning, the Silver Cross Emergency Facility on 143rd East of Bell in town uh, held an active shooter drill. Uh, the Northwest Homer Fire Department, Homer Township Fire, and the Will County Sheriff's Department assisted in uh, their drill. A lot of area fire department supported also. Uh, the training reinforced the, sil the skill set of all participants and strengthened the already strong working relationship between the public safety agencies that serve your village. Uh, notice of the event was posted on the Sheriff's Department webpage and Facebook page. 
and the Village of Homer Glen's webpage and Facebook page. All surrounding dispatch centers and departments were notified. There was signage in numerous spots outside of the facility to ensure that people passing by knew that there was a training drill in progress. And the drill itself was contained within the facility. We put the notification about the drill out last minute so people weren't blocking entrances or getting in the way to video the drill or take photos and stuff like that um, or just to see what was going on. Most importantly though, we don't want bad guys showing up to observe our procedures and how we handle those type of incidents. So that's why we didn't want to put it out too far in advance, okay? Because um, they would learn how to do the most harm, not only to us, but especially to the public. So we wanted to keep them from doing that. Uh, we do lockdown drills in our schools regularly, and announcements aren't made to the public prior to those drills either for those same reasons, okay? <coughs> Uh, even though all of these precautions were taken, someone with access to a phone app posted on social media, and I'm going to quote it, there are reports of a shooting near West 143rd Street and South Pebble, Creek, South Pebble Creek Drive, one person injured, end quote. This made numerous residents, especially the parents of school children, worry. This was about a little over a mile and a half away from where we were at, so it wasn't next door, okay? Everyone must realize that you have a lot of responsibility when you post something like that when it is not true. This adds to the draining of public safety resources when they could be utilized to respond to necessary calls for service. I caution the public that just because something is posted by someone on a social media site, it does not mean that it is true. If you ever have concern about something, do not hesitate to contact your local 911 dispatch center to verify what you have read. Don't forget that if there is an immediate threat or danger, call 911. That's what it's there for. This is all very basic, I know, but in this uh, technology age, too many people are relying on social media for their information, and they're taking it all as gospel. Too many people are too quick to make knee-jerk comments on social media about something that they know absolutely nothing about. I want the public to know, and the board, to be assured that the public safety, I mean that the public safety is our top priority, and I know I speak for the local fire departments also. We will continue to train so that we are prepared to the best of our ability to protect you in every type of situation we're confronted with. Thank you. Thank you. speaking for about a year now. This is in regard to the agricultural property located at 15064 West 143rd. My neighbors and I are here today because the agricultural land that's behind our homes is a very gray area. And at this point, we've called code enforcement, and I guess code enforcement goes out there, but not all of them are um, experienced with agricultural land, so to speak. And we're not getting any solid answers. We'd like to know if there's permits <coughs> for the gentleman that's doing what he's doing out there. He's filling in the land. He's put in a road across all the properties behind us on his property granted, but it's against the property line. I didn't know if they could do that. Can somebody put a road against your property line? Or does he need permits? I don't believe he needs permits for things like roads and things like that. 
Our concern is that he's actually going to be operating a business in the barn. And right now he has equipment there, he has sheet metal there, he has um, machinery there, and he says it's storage. I'm hoping that it is because now there's a drain pipe running from that business down the other end that's being buried. I don't know what's going to be put down that drain pipe and we're all sitting on wells. That's a concern. My other concern is, I guess it did get turned over to your engineering and drainage department. Um, do we know anything on that or how do us as the residents find out about that? Is there a drainage plan? Is Homer Glenn approving it? Because right now, the road that he's putting in is higher than our properties and all of the water will drain into our property and we all have our septic fields out there. They will flood. So we would like to know what the drainage, we would like to know what the drainage plan is. And if Homer Glenn is going to issue them a permit for it, what the plan is, will it be inspected? I mean, there's things and he just moves forward with this. And we're here today, my neighbors and I are here today to plead our case to you. We've already called code enforcement, they've already come out. And the model for this gentleman and agricultural land and what he's proposing to use it for cannot simply be he's going to ask for forgiveness instead of permission. We all built our homes here. We're residents here. We love it. We want to raise our families here. We didn't ask for permission. Or excuse me, we didn't ask for forgiveness. We asked for permission. We got our permits. We did everything according to the rules and regulations that we had to. Every time um, my neighbors or myself ask, you try to help me as much as you can, but the answers we get back is that it's a gray area. It's agricultural, so different. We'll have to look into it. Well, he might be able to do that. We don't know. And we need to know. We actually need to know. There's also an issue between uh, my house and my neighbor's house. There's an easement. And this gentleman has let us know that he's planning to use that easement as a road. He's, he already told us, it's an easement, well, he's going to use it. Doesn't matter what he says, he cannot use the easement. So when he, and he's taking down the fence to get to that easement. And once he does that, the bomber trucks that drive behind our houses every day, every weekend, will then be coming down Chicory Trail, going down the easement, because he needs to access <coughs> that, he says. So we're going to have bomber trucks running on an easement, which we told him you can't do that. And he said, yes, I can, it's an easement. So, uh, Mayor, where do we go from here? What do we do? Well, what do we sorry, call? What do we do? do? A couple of things, Mayor. The, um, the, in order to run a commercial business out of the property, uh, if he's doing so, would require a special use permit. So we are trying to monitor that. That does get a little difficult if we don't have access into the buildings. I uh, believe we have gotten access uh, into the buildings. Um, so we haven't determined that there's any um, business activity. He does have equipment there, but it doesn't appear to be uh, utilized, so that's kind of an ongoing uh, maintenance item. Uh, there is an unapproved right away uh, that's between uh, uh, Mrs. Haley's home and, and another home. Uh, he doesn't have the uh, ability to use that, um, so that would be a code enforcement issue if he uh, did try to use that. Uh, the drainage laws are, uh, they are a little complicated, and I, I don't profess to be an expert on that, so I, I'd be happy to follow up with uh, Mrs. Haley on that. Afterwards. What I'd like to do is, can you come in tomorrow? It would have to be in the evening. I, I work a full-time job. That's okay. I know that feeling. Uh, <laughs> what time do you make it? Five. Five? Uh, I've got to come in that meeting, but I can check the point. If not, we'll be able to At five o'clock tomorrow, here. Come here. And we'll find out what we can do for it. Okay. And as far as... It's a great area. The, um, the gentleman that came out to Casey, He's the person who told me that there's now sheet metal in there. And also on the barn, he has two electrical meters. We've seen people come and go and work there. That's what it looks like. And usually if it looks like a duck, <coughs> quacks like a duck, it's a duck. So yeah, we have we're just concerned. In court. That's the you know, and if he's going to beautify it and use it for what it is, that's fine. Mayor, thank you very much. You're quite welcome. I appreciate your time. Has anyone looked in to see if he even has a business license? I'm sorry, one more time. Has anyone looked in to see if he even has a business license? I don't believe he does. I don't. You did? Well, no, I don't know his business license. I know his spring company, he manufactures torsion, torsion springs. Okay. And it used to be on Canton Farm Road in an industrial strip mall. And now it's not there anymore because I believe the shop is. We'll get her. Yeah. Right. All right. We'll, we'll talk tomorrow Thank and you. we'll see if we can get to straighten out tomorrow. If not, we'll find out what we have to do. Thank you. You're quite welcome. John, you want to talk again?
No, that's all right. Thank you. You're quite welcome. You're on the list. <laughs> okay, public comment is done. Next is legislation and action items. I'd like to invite the members of the Homer Glenn Junior Women's Club up to the podium for this next item. Tonight, on behalf of the Homer Glenn Junior Women's Club, we are joined by President Karen Hill Davis, Treasurer Marina Casto, Miss Lisa Johnson, and Miss Mary Lee. The Homer Glenn Junior Women's Club is a non-for-profit organization founded in 2010 by residents Kathy Young and Rachel Chorley. The club fulfills its vision of a brighter tomorrow by donating funds and resources, hands-on service, extended volunteer opportunities to the community, and recognizing volunteer excellence. Fostering educational endeavors and providing a strong network to promote socialization, friendship, personal growth, leadership, and care, and caring. I am honored to announce that the Homer Glenn Junior Women's Club has awarded the village with a $24,000 grant to be used towards constructing a gazebo in Heritage Park. Our next item is a resolution recognizing the grant. Is there a motion to approve resolution number 18-002, a resolution recognizing a grant from the Homer Glenn Junior Women's Club for the construction of a gazebo as part of the village's Heritage Park development? <coughs> Second. Trustee Gray, discussion? Uh, no discussion other than thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I know you guys have put a lot of time and effort into working with the village to try to get this finally into fruition, so we appreciate your due diligence and your commitment to it. We really appreciate it. This is, uh, to me, another example of the volunteers in this town who put in their time and effort and in this case, um, donating dollars that save taxpayer dollars. And um, I think that sort of epitomizes what we try to do here in Hallmark Land. And I think, pardon me, the um, Junior Women's Club is a great example of that. So thank you very much. I agree with what they're saying. And it gets better and better every year, so we can't thank you enough. Thank you all. With that, I'd like to play uh, Madam Clerk, please call the Trustee Gray? Aye. Trustee Caprio? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Sweet? Aye. Trustee Burian? Aye. Trustee Hanks v. Aye. Motion carries. With that, I'd like to present a copy of the signed resolution to President Chairman Paul Davis. <laughs> if I didn't sign it, you can. My wife <laughs> can <laughs> sign it. <laughs> to serve as a community-wide public gathering space for Homer Glen, and the active core area of Heritage Park will include the following amenities. Challenge course, fitness area, beanbag, platforms, bocce, portion, didn't we just hear this? <laughs> courts, pickleball courts, nature-based playground, tennis courts, sand, volleyball courts, and sensory garden featuring a gazebo. And the Homer Glen, In Homer Glen Junior Women's Club, a local not-for-profit organization founded in 2010, has donated <coughs> funds and resources, lets hand on services opportunities, fostered educational endeavors and scholarships, and provided a strong network to promote socialization, friendship, personal growth, leadership, and caring in Homer Glen community. And the Homer Glen Women's Club began with 26 number and now has grown to a membership of 60 women and counting. The Homer Glen Junior Women's Club established, established a legacy fund with the purpose of raising funds to be used towards a project that aims to benefit all members of the Homer Glen community. And the Homer Glen Women's Club established, oops, Homer Glen Junior Women's Club has determined that a legacy project to be funded with a gazebo within the village's Heritage Park. 
The executive board of the Home of Land Junior Women's Club has voted in favor of awarding $24,000 Legacy Project Grant to the Village of Homer Glen to be used towards constructing the Gazebo and Heritage Park. Now, therefore, be resolved by the President and the Village Board of Trustees of the Village of Homer Glen, Will County, Illinois, that the foregoing recitals are hereby, hereby incorporated into this resolution as if fully set forth herein. Oh, there's more. <laughs> The Homer Glen Juniors Women Club shall submit the specified amount of twenty four thousand dollars to the village of Homer Glen prior to substantial completion of the active core area of the Heritage Park developments. <coughs> Upon completion of the gazebo, a permanent recognition plaque shall be affixed to the gazebo, recognizing the grant from the Homer Glen Junior Women's Club. The various portions of this resolution are hereby expressly declared to be, declared to be severable and the invalid, invalid, and any such portion of this resolution shall not affect the validity of any other portions of this resolution, which shall be enforced to its fullest extent possible. All ordinances and, or portions of the resolutions previously passed are adopted by the Village of Homer Plan that do not count <coughs> with the inconsistency with the provisions of the resolution hereby. This resolution shall stay in full force and effect from it and after its passage and approval. Thank you. Can we just get an update on that? 
Uh, these are moving along. I know I see one of them every day in my subdivision. Yeah, they're, they're actually finishing up the work on Eagle Ridge Drive and once that's completed, uh, and the reason for the delay on that one was because of the nine core uh, pipeline that had to be uh, adjusted. Uh, that's been since been done. Uh, once they complete that work, then it's just a matter of restoration. So it should be done fairly short, fairly soon. Okay. Yeah, clerk, it should be Trustee Gray? Aye. Trustee Caprio? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Sweets? Aye. Trustee Gurian? Aye. Trustee Nancy Trick? Aye. Motion carries. Number five. Is there a motion to appoint a time fund for uh, to the parade festival? Wait, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is there a motion to approve ordinance? Town will pass. Is there a motion to approve ordinance number 18-022, approving plan subdivision for the proposed Duke subdivision located at 12513 West Sandy, Illinois, Illinois. B. Or will not be separate? Okay. Is there a motion to approve ordinance number 18-023, approving one map amendment rezoning from the A2 res rural residential to R3 A single family residential? District and two site plan with certain variances for the proposed Duke subdivision located at 12513 Miss Hadley Road, Home of Illinois, with an additional condition to allow the village to locate a tornado siren pole on the detention pond and parcel with proper access. So, Mr. Durian. Second. size of that and we have 11 lots so they're, they're complementary in size um, our, our lots are a little bit deeper um, but uh, they're, they're roughly around the same so not, not too much difference um, and, and with the location of the road it's just we can't put the road in the low area because we have no way to provide our detention storage but we can't put it in the <coughs> street so even if the road was to go on the west side of the property um, that is where all the trees are that we're preserving that's the whole tree line, you know, that we're keeping back there, not disturbing, and that's part of the beauty of, you know, the land there. That's I understand that, but that was a piece of land is very narrow to begin with. So why, how big are your lots? How big are your lots? Because the map that we're looking at, it's almost, it's, it's quite, they're quite a bit smaller. The Windsor Court properties are, how big lots? Uh, yeah, they, uh, they range to, from 90 foot wide uh, to 100 foot wide on, on the ones that are facing to the east. That, that's a, that's a approximate width. And they're all along 15,000 square feet lots. And the 76 foot ones are how much? No, those are the ones on the south, but they're really deep. They're all, they're all 15,000 square feet. Okay. 76 seems awfully narrow to try and stick a house in there with the setbacks. Well, it's 50. It, it would be a... Uh, 56 foot wide house, yeah, which is, you can do a three car garage on a 56 foot wide house. I mean, I have multiple models that have that width. 
and construction traffic will be managed through this process because I do know some people that live in the area that have called me and they're concerned with construction traffic where that current dead end is. Yes, well, we, um, in the plan commission, we spoke about putting a barrier there, which we would be, you know, open to as long as the fire and um, police would be okay with that. Um, we would put some, you know, concrete barriers there so no one would be able to use the Windsor Court. So the transfer process? Yes. Uh, I'd just like to mention in the uh, in one of the planning commission meetings, it was mentioned about water flow to the west. Has that been taken care of? That's all been accommodated into the detention area. Uh, yes, I mean, we'll, we'll, yeah, we have to do with all the drainage, but yes, I mean that's we have to con contain our drainage and release it at a restricted rate. And that's what you're talking about, the low area of detention. Yeah, the, the site drains to the west, but it will still be collected and detained. Like there's some sort of landscape buffer going in uh, along the roadway uh, along the uh, east side. On the east side, yes, uh, you can see part of the plans. You can see the, the, the heavy landscaping and stuff just to separate between the property lines that are there. Yes. Because what Trustee Speaks had said about cars parking along the street, there is going to be some sort of landscape buffer to yes. cushion those existing homeowners. Yes, I believe you have some views of it. And right, I, we have that in our back, I think. Yeah. And, and we actually changed that for the recommendation of the plan commission and the residents there. Yeah, the um, originally, we had a path and then we just did a, but they didn't want people that could potentially be walking along their fence right. line. So this was, and and also the homes that are going to be built there are going to be consistent with the homes that have been building in like the Glenview Walk Estate subdivision. I believe you guys have some photos of them. You know, they're all custom homes. Um, you know, they're not going to be a cookie cutter subdivision with any, you know, repeats. It's going to be all custom homes and. Beautiful site with the tree line. I think it's going to be very attractive. And most of the lots there, are one through eleven, or uh, four through eleven, would be lookout and walkout lots. Is there going to be a monument sign on the uh, avenue? Or yes, I mean we'd like to have some sort of signage up there. Yes. How long do you expect this project? To I know it's hard to say. Well, it shouldn't take more than two years tops. I mean, it's, it's 11 lots. It's not a giant project. It'll be something that we can, you know, build a model home or two and then you know, kind of go from there. It's, I only have uh, two lots left in Club you Walk. Other than economics, no, other than economics, uh, you have the three seventy-six foot lots. You couldn't have made those larger just combined and made two back then? I know. Right, because then that's that's like spot zoning. You, you want it dense, and then on um, uh, Windsor Court, even the other side of Windsor Court doesn't look like that. Well, what what is the width of the lots on Windsor Court? Kevin, also, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't remember, I don't remember offhand. Well, I know the cafe. So good problem. Well, sidewalk response. No, there will be sidewalks. We've moved the sidewalk to the other side of the street. Yes, in front of the homes. What about the elevations over there? Are, are, are they going to be walkouts, basement walkouts in the back? We believe so, yeah. yeah. Look at some lookouts and some walkouts. And then the three at the end would be flat. So the ones that are on Windsor Court are totally all brick. They're huge. What? I don't know why we have these frame homes in our packet. With with uh, you know it looks like brick about 12, 12 inches up only, and the rest is all frame. So those were examples for the skinny lines. That's what the plan commission. Ask them to show models for the three skinny lines. That's what they provided. Well, this isn't what you just said. They're supposed to look like the houses well, on Windsor Court. They'll be they'll be consistent with the homes that we've done and let you walk, which are I believe there's pictures of the packet. This is I think I think those were more for like a floor plan perspective than so much an elevation. I mean, if you look at the 
ranch homes and the two stories that we built, the ones we've at, the ones we've actually built, and you can see the elevations of those. Page six and seven. I don't have those. Okay. I have Glenview Walk, which are beautiful. Well, I guess we're lucky. Yeah. So is this, which house is this? I'm going to love these ones. I have two sets. No, the, the ones on pages six and seven are the samples of three of the homes that we built in the Glenview Walk Estate subdivision. Mr. O'Malley, just to clarify, I believe you, you are proposing all first floor phase Yes, two. yeah, they'll be all right on the first floor. Most of them will be right all the way up in the front. Um, and I think what's going to really go there are a lot of ranches, um, or some ranches, and those will be you know, entirely brick as well. Price point? Uh, I mean, the, the price of a lot of construction today will be an upper 500 up from there. So that'll be, you know, probably 575 for that's the smallest one. I mean, some of the other ones we built in Levy Walk have been in the 800s. Sure, sure. I would, when I look at this, I think this is a lot like, um, unfortunately, many pieces of land we have in town. That, um, and I think as, as we've talked through this, I, I think I think Mr. O'Malley agreed this is an optimal, right? But this is taking a piece of buildable land and balancing both sides of someone that owns a piece of land has a right to build on that um, and has, in my opinion, when you look at Glenview Walk, um, a reputation of, in this town of building quality products. So I don't have concerns on that side. And, and if you're telling me that they're going to be similar to Glenview Walk, I think those are beautiful homes. And we're talking price points here oh. that match um, are in the neighborhood of, of the adjacent neighbors. So, and, and I would say that throughout this process, I think there's been flexibility on both sides and talking through because this is a, a narrow strip and trying to figure out what worked best the least. <coughs> um, and so, again, I don't, it's not optimal, but I think it's I think it's a plan that I can support. And, and again, I need to build a quality product and, and the reputation of this town and the product you built is something that I'm comfortable with. Well, I'm just saying we do have to think of the residents as well. They probably wouldn't have bought those lots if they knew housing that is on a tight, you know, squished in there, basically. You know, housing that doesn't look similar to theirs. Now they have a street in front. They have a street in back. What's the resale value of that property? Would you buy a house that have two streets front and back right, right there? No. Well, I would say that, that we're going to see when, if these sell, one, but, but two, um, I think any time you build a home or buy a home on an empty piece of land that's buildable property, that's a, that, that's, that's a risk that's, that's involved there. And, and that's what I said. There's a balance to me here of someone that owns a piece of land and has a right to build on that land. And, and these conversations have been back and forth of trying to make the best out of this part of land and taking in those, taking those things into account. Um, and I think, remind me, I may be wrong on this, but the reason that street is like that is to save the trees on the back end of that process, correct? Between that and the drainage, yeah. We, we want to work with the natural site as it is. Yeah. That's which is why the street's on that side. And, and we talk through that in a way. So it, this is making the best of a not optimal situation, but it, it is. Um, and I agree, uh, Trustee Suisse, that the street, while it's not common, it's not unique. There are other areas in the village where we have streets on both sides of houses. And as far as the view goes, I have what you had mentioned initially about people parking along the street and possibly peering into people's backyards, they are putting some sort of a landscape buffer along that side. As well as, if you've ever walked Heroes Trail, um, there are plenty of places where you are you are literally above people that are there and you are looking down into yards. So, um, again, we, we took what we got with Heroes Trail because that was you know, uh, property that was uh, given to us essentially. And you know we impacted those uh, neighbor, neighbors as well. So I, I think they have done a, a fairly decent job of trying to mitigate the impact on the existing homeowners.
kilometers along the western edge of their new subdivision, the eastern, the western edge of uh, Windsor Court, the eastern edge of their subdivision. And uh, like, like Justin Gurian said, you know, it, it's not optimal, but they, they've gone a long way to, to make yes. it help. <laughs> I did not have a chance to go through the minutes that you gave us today from the March 15th. Was there any public comments to this? Four pages. Regarding public comments. No, did the residents come out and, and oh, yeah. the residents? Oh, yeah, there were concerns about the property values, uh, lack of privacy, and uh, so that's one of the reasons why the planning commission wanted like 10 foot wide. Right. Private strip, heavily landscaped, and as far as property values, they want to make sure the price point. You know, they started six hundred thousand, um, and the only issue they didn't really address are those three skinny lots at seven six foot wide. And, and the making sure that's my problem's question. I think it was important that I'm sorry that um, construction wise, from a safety standpoint. I know, I know someone at Planning Commission made comments about having small children and construction traffic over the course of the next few years. That's why it's important, I think it's important to make sure that uh, we've got that blocked off on construction traffic, would you agree? Yeah. Yes. I'm just saying, you know, the Windsor Court will lot with 113 feet wide, and now you're coming in at 76 and a half. So it is going to look different. It's going to look like a more cramped type of subdivision. Well, I agree with uh, trustees on the other side of the bench there. I mean, it's a, it's a quality product, but I, I'm not a fan of the 76 foot lot. That's just, not, that's my hang up. And the setbacks between will still be the same. There's, there's still distance between the homes. It's not, these may be a little bit deeper homes, but there's no, they're, they're still, they're not closer together. I would rather see it wider, wider lots, so it doesn't look, so it looks similar to Devour Woods is right across the street. It's a uh, more open type of, you know, lots are bigger over there. I think it would look aesthetically better if you could increase the lot width. I have one more question. Um, since you had said that you possibly wouldn't be putting up a monument sign, will there be an HOA? Yes, partly because of the maintenance of the detention pond. Okay. So they'll be there for that, and then also um, the uh, easement, to, or the, it'll be an outlot in between the road and the property line, so that'll all be maintained by the HOA also. And, the, and I think uh, in, the, in the plan is also that uh, all that landscape and everything will be done before the second permit, right. so that'll be done relatively quick into the process. You keep saying landscape, what type are you? What, what are you saying? You know, what type of landscape are you saying? Um, I believe we have it all in the packet there. There's a whole landscape plan and, and uh, we did elevation a landscape plan. All right. Here's some views of this house. I didn't see that. Thank you. Sure. I'll give it back to you. It's going to be pretty heavily screened. You didn't have to make any accommodations on the roadway, do you? That's still in standard size. I'm saying do yeah. <laughs> or, or 
where should it be, Brentwood, with the other street and across the street there? It lines up with Brentwood on the other side of Hadley. We discussed that just Yeah. No, I have a problem with the name. I do. Oh, I say it. Yeah. I was just trying to. Causes 
it causes more work than we need to have happen. I was. Uh, I think part of having a community room is is making it available to the widest range of activities mm -hmm. for the public that we can. With that, does there come some minimal costs and some staff time? I think that's included with again operating a village and having a community room. Um, who, who could we potentially explore before we? I think knee jerk with <coughs> and ban things in there. So maybe we could look into um, whether if there is that amount of cost on something, we can look into, you know, some sort of, um, I don't know, either reimbursement or before we just start banning things. Well, I, I think, think it's easier to do that than to charge. They could do other activities or other arts and crafts than to charge them for it. I'm rule number 12. I think there, you have a provision in here for damages. Credit card. Right, there is a for damages, but not for prep, you know, like the prep work, like oh, do putting down all the plastic and buying all this, all those <coughs> protections. How many times has this been as something like well, this? Well, I don't know if it's been, been necessary. Yeah, I'm just bringing you know. it up for no, the past experience. I, yeah. I can say we posted painting events where I work, and it, children events do get messy, and we've had to power wash or some things. Get out. It depends on what it is. We don't have carpet either, so it's easier to get it out of a cement floor or a tile or wood floor than it is a carpet. So I see Sharon's point. The prep work of it, maybe, maybe like Brian said, not restrict, but put um, stipulations on what they have to do before the event and after the event, or put a charge to it. The, I, I would hate to bring the community in here though, and then slap charges on them just because they, you know what I mean? I'd rather have them be aware of what could happen. You know, and say we'll prep the best you can. And, you know, we'll, we'll adjust if necessary. And if you make damages, yes, we do have to charge you. And I'm sure most groups would understand. That's what we do. I agree, and I would say also that if that does become a problem in the future, it's going to be years from now. I guess it's not too worn looking back there right now. Maybe we could look at taking. It is modular carpet. We could take a section out, put a tile, and say, you know, if there is going to be any less, try to keep it in those areas where it can be a little bit more uh, leaned up. So. Probably the tile and the reason I have so many tiles in here because it's so loud and so wonderful. I'm talking about just like that in the community area. So maybe a, a section of the community area. You could probably do that. Yeah. So I mean, again, this only becomes a problem in the future. Right now, it doesn't matter what we were doing that one. doesn't. Are you aware of issues that have occurred back here? This was really one, no, a one week event. It was a, a school district art uh, function. We did go out and purchase the uh, Plastic, I'm going to call it spray wrap material, like you see in models. That was fairly easy to install. Um, uh, we did make sure we pull it up each evening if we had a, a, an evening event. Uh, it does come through down quickly and comes out quickly. Uh, to me, the bigger issue was uh, just using um, some of the lessons learned using um, tablecloths because there were some issues with uh, the kids with markers. But I, I do agree, I think it's for parents to do a business. Um, sometimes we, we actually run into the bigger issues, I think, on homeowners association meetings with bringing in food or spilling coffee and those kinds of things. Um, I, I think it ebbs and flows, um, and I think we kind of manage it along the way. Um, there is definite staff time with setting up tables and chairs uh, to specific designs, um, but again, I, I, that's the price of doing uh, the business, and, and we're getting better at that, and we're better staff at, at, at this kind of business. Yeah, I'd rather have to pay for carpet cleaning on a regular basis or replace a tile once in a while, but know that the community room is being used all the time. I mean, I think that's what we, what we, the thought behind it was. Um, so. But I also think that we should put, you know, not restrictions, but like I said, give them rules to follow because I don't want it to be a free for all and then just be no one every room. Yeah, agree. Agree. But but that stipulation basically is that's the first place. Yeah. Right. Right. You know, and, and things are going to happen. We but I'd rather them. let them know, take caution, you know, beforehand than just us running your credit card for 500 bucks because you damaged your carpet. I would rather, you know, specify that ahead of time. So that's being done. <coughs> yeah, so we can do a better job <coughs> across the board. So I mean, what we'll have to do the training is just watch it and see what happens. I mean, if we can okay. make some changes, we can make some changes, but uh, for really the first time that this has been a, an issue that's been like, uh, my just had to for a week long, like it was so.
Christ and so on. Okay, so we're good there. So I need a uh, roll call. Trustee Gray? Aye. Trustee Cabria? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Suisse? Aye. Trustee Burian? Aye. Trustee Nancy Troy? Aye. Motion carried. <coughs> Number seven, is there a motion to assign a Class J liquor license, special event license to the Homer Township Road District for the Homer Community Festival that occurred June 21st through June 24th, 2018? It is understood that the $200 fee for said license will be waived by the village. I so move. Mr. Cabrio? I'll second. Mr. Attorney, discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Trustee Grant? Aye. Trustee Cabrera? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Sweet? Aye. Trustee Burian? Oh, sorry, I thought it was Burian. Aye. Trustee Nancy Troy? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, is there any old business? Is there any new business? Yes, there awesome. are. I do have something. What do you got? Um, I just want to bring up and remind staff that's what happened today. When the plan commission has more than one meeting, we need to give all the minutes to those meetings. Uh, because there was uh, the, I asked, um, I asked BJ to send the second, the first meeting of the O'Malley issue because there was four pages of comments. The whole subdivision <coughs> came out. And then the only thing that was included in the packet was the second meeting that has two people's comments. So we need, so the board gets all the information. We need, if there's more than one place commission meeting, we need all those minutes or drafts. Same with like the landscape plan. You know, there was a landscape plan. We didn't see it. So now we have to, you know, it makes us not look like we're getting all the info. Okay. And then you should get all the information before you have to vote so so BJ could be just make sure that we follow up with the risk more than one meeting on it, we get both meetings. Okay. Uh, is there any other new business? Is there a motion to adjourn? I so move. Trustee Sweet? I'll second. Trustee Cabrio, all in favor? Aye, aye. Opposed? Meetings adjourned.